Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is pin photodiode. This is very much similar to the normal junction or a conventional uh, PN junction photodiode apart from slight changes. As the name indicates, this I stands for undoped intrinsic layer. So between P and N regions, I layer is placed. We have already discussed the PN junction photodiode. We have discussed that in between P and N regions, there is a depletion region, but we are creating one intrinsic undoped I layer, intrinsic layer between P and N regions. So width of the depletion region gets increased. This is the major uh, difference between the conventional uh, photodiode and pin photodiode. But the remaining operation is similar to that of the conventional uh, PN junction photodiode. As shown in this diagram, this upper part is P plus region, which is uh, formed by using indium aluminum arsenide. Lower part is for N plus region, which is indium phosphide. And this I layer consists of the material indium gallium arsenide. Now this P is connected to the negative terminal of battery. N plus region is connected to positive terminal of battery, means the diode is reverse batched. Now, as we discussed due to the I layer, the width is getting increased. Whenever the light falls on this I layer, electron hole pairs are generated. Now, whatever holes are there, they will be getting attracted towards the negative terminal of battery, same like the conventional PN junction uh, photodiode. And all the electrons will be getting attracted towards the positive terminal of battery. So as I said, the working is almost similar only major difference is that here I layer is inserted between P and N regions. This is the characteristic of uh, PN, uh, pin photodiode. It is the graph of bias voltage versus photocurrent. IP stands for photocurrent. If we are uh, having a region which is called constant current mode. So this particular region is representing the constant current mode. Now. As far as the resistivity is concerned, the resistivity of I layer is, I mean, resistivity of this layer is between 10 ohm to 100 kilo ohm, while the resistivity of P plus and N plus region is less than 1 ohm. This is another, the major difference between these layers. Now, the most important thing is that, like the normal PN junction photodiode, we have to operate this device in the reverse bias condition. Now let us discuss the different noise currents in case of pin photodiode. So first type of noise current is photon noise. As the name indicates, it is the noise current produced due to the action of photons. We know that in case of uh, any photo detector, the incident photons causes the output current at the output of detector. But all the photons are not arriving at the same time at the detector. So there are random fluctuations in the arrival rate of incoming photons. That means input is randomly fluctuating. So it produces fluctuations in the output current which represents the photon noise. So photon noise are representing random fluctuations in the photon arrival rate. Next type of noise is a short noise. It is related to the ambient light. We have discussed the concept of the dark current. Even if there are no photons falling on the photo detector, still due to the ambient light, certain amount of current is generated at the output, which is called the dark current, which is generated by ID. So the ambient light produces or is responsible for the generation of dark current. Again, there are fluctuations, variations in this uh, dark current. So this represents the noise and it is given by uh, the short noise is square root of 2QB in the bracket ID plus IP. ID is the dark current, IP is the photon current that is generated, I mean electrical current that is generated due to the incoming photons. B is the bandwidth, Q is the charge of electron. Third type of noise is Johnson noise or thermal noise. Under thermal equilibrium conditions, the charge carriers have random motions. Due to these random motions of the charge carriers, this is happening uh, under the equilibrium conditions. 
under thermal equilibrium conditions so due to this random motions noise is created at the output which is called the thermal noise or johnson noise which is given as i thermal is square root of 4 ktb upon rt where k is the boltzmann's constant which is 1.38 into 10 raise to minus 13 rt is the total resistance that is combination of source resistance and load resistance t is the temperature operating temperature b is the bandwidth last type of noise is generation recombination noise so this is due to the fluctuations that are created uh, due to the variations in the recombination rate the recombination rates of electron hole pairs are again fluctuating are again causing variations because of which the noise is created in simplified language remember it like this generation recombination noise is combination of these two uh, noise so it is given as i total noise is square root of i thermal square plus i short square now let us solve few numericals related to photodiode first problem is a photodiode has quantum efficiency of 65% so first we will write the given values that is eta quantum efficiency is eta which is 65% so it is 65% which is 0.65 when photons of energy this is the value of energy of photons which is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules are incident upon it first part at what wavelength the photodiode is operating now i have made a list of formulae we will discuss the required formula while solving the numerical let us first concentrate on calculating the required wavelength at which the photodiode is operating we have the first formula energy is h c upon lambda h is the planck's constant c is speed of light lambda is the wavelength so i have to make use of this formula is h c upon lambda therefore lambda that is operating wavelength can be written as h c upon e from this equation i have just rearranged the terms h is the planck's constant whose value i have written so it is 6.626 into 10 raise to minus 34 into c this is the value of h into c c is the speed of light speed of light we know it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second upon e value of e that is energy which is given in the question it is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules so if you solve this the answer of lambda that is operating wavelength is 1.325 1.325 micrometer do you remember micro means 10 raised to minus 6 so this is the answer of operating wavelength 1.325 into 10 raised to minus 6 that is 1.325 micrometer second part it is asked to calculate incident optical power to obtain the photo current of 2.5 micro ampere so this is the uh, given value of photo current 2.5 micro ampere photo current is generated by ip now we have to calculate incident optical power for this first we will calculate the value of responsivity that is r look at the formula formula number 2 responsivity is n q q is the charge of electron lambda upon hc which is same as n q upon e and one more formula of responsivity is photo current ip upon optical power p0 so let us make use of this formula because energy is given in the question so i will write it and that is eta q not n it is eta q upon energy so let us first calculate this value of r by putting values so of eta eta is 0.65 into q value of q is 1.602 it is charge of electron into 10 raised to minus 19 upon value of e is given in the question 1.5 into 10 raise to minus 19 so if you solve this value of responsivity is 0.694 now i have to calculate the incident optical power so again i will be making use of this formula of responsivity which is ip upon p0 so i will first write the formula ip upon Uh, p0 p0 is the op output optical power therefore p0 is ip upon r just i have rearranged the terms 
so p0 is the optical power output optical power ip is given in the question it is 2.5 micro ampere micro means 10 raised to minus 6 upon r just now we have calculated this value of r therefore the output optical power is 3.6 micro watt this is the answer of the incident optical power it is not output optical power it is incident optical power Next problem, indium gallium arsenide pin photodiode has the following parameters. Lambda that is wavelength 1300 nanometer, ID that is dark current 4 nano amperes, efficiency, quantum efficiency, eta is 0.9, RL that is resistance is 1 kilo ohm, incident optical power P0 is 300 nano watt and receiver bandwidth is 20 megahertz calculate first part mean square quantum noise current second part mean square thermal noise current at 25 degree centigrade first mean square quantum noise current is same as the short noise or short current i i short so this this is the formula square root of 2 q b id plus ip now look at the given uh, data we have the value of ID that is dark current is given in the question that is ID but we need to calculate the value of IP. So to calculate the value of IP I will be making use of formula of this responsivity. Look at the formula it is NQ lambda upon SC which is same as uh, eta Q lambda upon SC which is same as eta Q upon E which is same as IP upon P0. So from this I can well write this responsivity formula as eta Q lambda upon HC is same as IP upon P0. Therefore, IP can be written as eta Q lambda upon HC into P0. What I did, I have made use of this formula and equated this second and last term to calculate this value of IP. So, put the values eta that is quantum efficiency which is 0 0.9 into Q charge of electron 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 into lambda. Lambda is operating wavelength 1300 nanometer that is 1300 into 10 raised to minus 9. Uh, this is eta Q lambda upon HC. H is the Planck's constant 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 34. This is the value of H Planck's constant C. C is the speed of light which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second. So if you solve this, the answer of this IP will be 282.87 nano ampere. Nano means 10 raised to minus 9. This is the answer of IP. Now we have to calculate the value of this third formula that is I short. So this value is I am making use of formula number 3 is square root of 2 QB 2 into Q is 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 into B. B is the bandwidth which is 20 megahertz which is 20 into 10 raised to 6 because this that bandwidth is given in megahertz, so it is 20 into 10 raised to 6, 2 QB in the bracket, ID plus IP. Value of ID is 4 nano amperes, so 4 into 10 raised to minus 9 plus IP. Just now we have calculated this value, 282.87 into 10 raised to minus 9. So if you solve this, answer of this mean square quantum noise, that is short noise current, is 1.35 nano ampere. Now the second part that is mean square thermal noise current at 25 degree centigrade. So this is the formula of thermal noise to calculate the thermal noise current. So I am making use of formula number 4 that is I thermal is equals to square root of 4 into K. K is the Boltzmann's constant. 1.38 into 10 raised to minus 23 into T. T is the operating temperature of 25 degree into 25 into 
BB is the bandwidth which is 20 megahertz so 20 into 10 raised to 6 upon RT. RT is actually total resistance which is equivalent to the load resistance because source resistance is might be negligible. So it is 1 kilo ohm that is 1000 ohm. If you solve this the answer of this second part that is the thermal noise current is 18 point 138 nano ampere. Next problem, the load resistance of 1 mega ohm is connected across pin photodiode. The area of cell is 0.35 mm square epsilon is equal to 10 raised to 5 into 10 raised to minus 10.5 uh, into 10 raised to minus 13 and electron saturation velocity is 10 raised to 7 meters per second. If width of depletion region is 12 micrometer, calculate first part transit time, second junction capacitance, third time constant. So let us perform the first calculation that is transit time. We have the formula of transit time. Transit time is T to the base TR which is depletion width upon carrier velocity. Carrier velocity is same as the electron saturation velocity. So it is depletion width upon carrier velocity. The depletion width is given in the question. Uh, we have to just simply put the value that is if width of depletion region is 12 micrometer. So it is 12 micrometer means 12 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter upon depletion width upon carrier velocity. Carrier velocity is 10 raised to 7 meters per second. So if you solve this then value of this TTR is 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 12 seconds. This is answer of first part. Second part junction capacitance that is CJ. Again we have a ready made formula epsilon A upon width. Value of epsilon is given in the question. So it is 10.5 into 10 raised to minus 13 into epsilon into A. A is the area of cell which is 0.35 in mm square. So into 10 raised to minus 6 upon because it is mm square upon uh, width. Width is given as this value of width is given in the question which is width of depletion region 12 micrometer so 12 into 10 raised to minus 6 so if you solve this answer of cj is 3.06 into 10 raised to minus 12 unit is farad you can well convert it into nanofarad microfarad and so on third part the time constant very simple time constant is product of these two things that is a uh, time constant is basically RC time constant. So it is RL into CJ. Value of RL is given in the question. So simply put the value. RL is the load resistance which is 1 mega ohm. So 1 into 10 raised to 6 ohm into CJ 3.06 into 10 raised to minus 12. Therefore value of this time constant is 3.06 into 10 raised to minus 6. That means 3.06 microseconds. So this is the answer of uh, this last part that is time constant. So that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.